Joining me now to discuss is Managing Director and CEO of Financial Derivatives Company, Mr. Bis Makrawani. Thank you for joining me tonight. And I see you're at our magic wall. Uh, a lot to discuss today, especially the MBR that has been raised to 17.5% as announced by the CBN governor. Uh, it's been raised five times, hasn't it, in the last 10 months. So um, yet inflation rates is on the decline. It has not declined. Um, is this the medicine or is this the dose? Yeah, thank you very much. <clears throat> like we say here, the central bank, the MPC, not the central bank, the Monetary Policy Committee mm. beat the bullet, right? By going up 100 basis points to 17.5% per annum. But the monetary policy rate is not a lending rate, it's a signaling rate to the market. So the actual rates you, are a composition of other rates which is, includes treasury rates and all of that. So what, what, what do we mean by this? You send the signaling rate up to 17.5% per annum, but the treasury rates for 90-day paper is down at 2%, and also the treasury rate for one-year paper is at about 8%. Mm. So the signaling rate is up, but the actual rates are down. Mixed signals. So inflation is still a canker worm, like you, see, you can see here. Five times in 10 months, but all that we've seen is 13 basis points reduction in inflation as against a 600, you know, that is 6% increase in total cumulative interest rates increase for, the, for this period. So that's important to note that. So again, it's the, the medicine is right, but the dose is inaccurate. You, the only way to do this is to make sure that the other rates in the economy go up and then it begins to affect what we call the marginal propensity to save which actually helps to tame inflation. Yeah, indeed. But um, I also understand that monetary policy does have its limits, and that's something that you have been talking about recently, isn't it? So why is that so? Well, monetary policy tools, basically monetary policy complements fiscal policy. So the tools for monetary policy have a limit. What you've done, you've seen that in spite of all of these increases of up to 6%, you've had only a marginal increase, decrease in inflation because, and if you, if you go to the next slide, you will find that of, you see, there was candor today that is set up, the Monetary Policy Committee was candid. Inflation is still biting, growth is tepid, and Naira is embattled, fact. But he also said with some humor that status quo is in the dustbin, yes. Losing is in the Atlantic Ocean, yes. But the treasury bill rates are declining. Yeah. So you cannot signal higher rates but at the same time and the federal government of Nigeria is seeking to borrow for 40 years at 9% per annum with a three-year moratorium. So one hand, businesses should borrow at 17 and a half plus, but the federal government of Nigeria wants to borrow for 40 years for at 9% per annum. There's some, you know, we need to reconcile this so that there's, you know, things complemented. They complement one another. Mm -hmm. In other words, the monetary conditions are loose while the monetary policy is tight, we must reconcile that. And it, so that we're not talking over the heads of you know, the common man on the streets. Yes. What does all of this mean to him? Well, interestingly, we broke this down into three particular segments. If you go forward, you'll find that, you go to the next slide, please. You'll find that we took a bag of rice. January is the period when prices come down. The price of rice in 2021 January was 17,000 Naira, and now it is 38,000 Naira in January. It went up to 45,000 during the Christmas. We went down to see what a bag of beans, there you are. Yeah. A bag of beans was 22,000 Naira in January 2021. It's now 32,000 Naira, it's gone up 45%. Tomatoes, 7,000 Naira in January 2021 is now 129%. And if that's not enough, a loaf of bread in January 2021 was 400 Naira. It's now 900 Naira, 125%. Chicken, if you can afford it, was 800 Naira in January 2021. It's 2,150%. That's not all. That's your food basket. Bread and butter issues. Yeah. Next slide. You will find here, a, a bus ride from Obalende to Orenshoki was 200 Naira in January 2021. It's now 400 Naira, 100% up. Flight ticket to Abuja was 35,000 one way in 2021. It's now 100,000 around 86%. Higher but in some instances. Thank God, MTN Airtel, 
the data bundle was 5,000 in January 21. It's now still 5,000 naira. So some good things. Next slide. You'll find here, in 20, 2015, mm -hmm. you, if you divided all our income by the population, every Nigerian was worth, had a value of $2,700, but now it's gone down marginally by 14% to $2,300. But in 2015, if you divide our external debt by all the, by the population, every Nigerian was owing $49. Yeah. Today, those Nigerians are owing $215. So it's up 339%. Well, it's secondary school. Primary schools, and let's look at secondary schools. You paid 2.5 2 million naira in 2015. Per annum, you are paying 7.1 million naira today. So that's what it is. So what next? That's a yeah. big issue. Yeah, and what, what next? Though? What next? Well, the big thing here is that February, inflation numbers will come out on the 15th of February, and the elections will be on February 25th. But you see, whether you like it or not, the Central Bank has done its own. The policy issue has, they've dealt with it. But the point is that after the presidential election, we are told, and we are, INEC has confirmed or guaranteed that there'll be free, fair, credible elections which so is there will be a change, yeah. but Winston Churchill said this, and please note that a change is as good as a rest. Thank you. We'll interpret that <laughs> as much as we can. Thank you so much, Mr. Rewani, uh, for being here.